Hi there and welcome to Dundee Piano. Today we're going to have a look at a version of Turkish March by Mozart. I'll give you a little preview of it and then we'll look at some of the notes in there. So. Okay, so you might recognise it, it's fairly famous. Um, it's Allegretto, quite fast and quite soft at the start with a louder part in the middle and then back to that theme again. Let's look at the notes. So we're in A minor. All the white keys with a G sharp, which comes right in the first bar. Okay, so we've got this little phrase. It's like an arabesque kind of shape. Da -da 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 -da. And I recommend probably index on G sharp. So you put the BA in front of it. Yeah. So I would say that would be like your A minor position. So you can get those two shapes from the first. Or you might like to play the same shape twice. Could do that as well. Whichever one suits your hand shape the best. Now we've got a bit of a skip and a jump all the way up to the top. Yeah, so we're going up to the high version of the B and the A, yeah, up here. Now, in between we have a Okay, F. It's really just the same pattern again. Okay, that's where we're heading to. So, as you get that, just practice the phrase on the right. Moving up, moving up. Yeah, so you're moving to three places. As you practice that on the left, uh, on the left we're going to have the A, A. So we're in an A minor chord, A, C, E around middle C, yeah? Middle finger, middle C. So that's very much the rhythm of the march. One. Left, 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 right, left. That's kind of like the if you were marching to this. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. You get it? Yeah, so that's your left hand pattern, which fits in between both left. Once you get them, slowly just try that pattern, both left, both left, both left, both left. So you have the two rhythms to work on, both together and left on its own, and then both right, both right, both left, yeah? I sometimes practice with students on drums or even on the piano itself to get the rhythms, yeah? Uh, both left, both right, both right, both left, both right, both right, both. Yeah? So that's the kind of pattern. You notice the left is always playing. So it's one of those pieces where the left has a steady rhythm. Okay, so if you can get the steady semi-quavers, that's the thing you're aiming for. A lot of people tend to go, you know, kind of uneven. You want to keep them as even as you can possibly imagine, yeah, okay. And one final thing before we move forward is the lightness of the left compared to the smoothness of the right, yeah? Yeah, 
so you're aiming for really smooth semi quavers here for this section. Yeah. In the next section, if we leave that one behind, you can pause and rewind. In the next section, the right is all about staccato. Yeah, so it's almost three times the same, just that one is the last pair of notes. We'll come to that in a moment. First of all, up here, A, C, and then we go into this phrase. So I recommend having your hand like one on E, two on F sharp, three on G, four on A, and five on B. Got it? So it's a kind of E minor shape. Yeah. And I guess we're in an E minor kind of. Yeah, it's a kind of E minor position both hands are in. Okay, so let's look at the right hand. We have a little couple of grace notes, appoggiaturas here. So they're aiming for the pinky, three, four, five, three, four, five. That's the, as quick as you can move. And it's a bit of a flourish because as you hit your pinky, it just becomes a staccato. Yeah. Try and get that pinky playing as the strongest in the bar. It's the first beat of the bar, even though you have two appoggiatures before it. It's a grace note with a flourish. And the last one. Well, first of all, you've got your three, five, two, four, one, three, two, four. This is quite common in classical music, yeah? Go between the ones and the threes and the fives and the threes and the twos and the four. So practice going up and down that, yeah. The last one is a B major chord. So you have your D sharp, F sharp. Those two fingers, or those two, or those probably not those two, those two probably, and then back to E on both hands. Yeah, let's talk about the left. So we have the same pattern, but it's on a different key. So the thumb stays on E, that's the only thing that stays the same. Everything else moves down. So you have a B and you have another E, it's an open fifth, an octave plus a fifth in between. strongest note in that bar and that goes with the pinky on the right so aim for pinkies together yeah so your pinkies go out together out inwards okay brings us to that little final section we're going into a B pinky thumb both B's that B chord so you can just practice going from the E oh, to the B and E okay so just rewind have a look at that section get to grips with which one's going where it's going to come back in the second page in the second half so get the hang of that one okay that's the first half now we're into the repeat part where it's in C major. And then it comes back to that one again. Okay, got that? Right, so first of all, the C major position, right hand C and E. And then going up to D and F, E and G, yeah? 
So you've got that as your first phrase. Then we have a smooth descended scale. Yeah. However you want to change your finger shape for that one to get the... Yeah. Let me do that. Maybe. It's probably neater to do that. So you can bring down four, three, two, one, cross. You have your G chord here. Yeah, that's a good tip to have. Yeah, so practice getting that nice and smooth, steady. Yeah, this is a on the left hand you're doing an arpeggio, I suppose, of sorts, broken chord. C, E, G, so the C and the E are octave, and then the G. Yeah, so it's almost a complete echo. Mezzo forte, piano. Yeah. The second time you don't have the, you just stop. So, this is a C version and a A minor version. It's almost identical, so focus on the first pattern of C. And then once you've got it all pretty steady. Transpose to A. And again, you can pause, rewind, have a look at that section for your hand positions. And then... Then we get to the loudest part of the tune after the original phrase, come back, and then... here with an E and it might be F. Anyway, when you go up to your C, there you're pushing the chord. Yeah. And we'll go to the finale. So, at the end we're up to C. Stepping down like an A minor harmonic scale, then skip. Ret. Now I looked up trills on a, on a Mozart piece like this one. You start from C, trill onto B. And you end with a little A underneath. Yeah, trill on that, shape on the B and C. And then you're done. Oh, there is another section actually. Yeah, but we've not got that on this arrangement. Can do that another time. Yeah, on the left. So we have a descending pattern E, open, D, moving down, C, repeat. So then you go back up. Yeah, so you've got E. A minor shape, I suppose. Down. Inwards. Resolving back to A again, yeah. So practice the left in pairs. Yeah, that 
that's where the next one goes. Anyway, um, that's about us for the Turkish March. I'll play through it, okay, once with no repeats, and let's hear the whole thing in context. Okay, thanks for watching.